good evening and welcome all to today's pdi expert opinion uh, we'll be starting shortly so kindly comply with, uh, in the next few minutes we will start so today's topic is going to be insights in pathogenesis of covid 19 implications in management of diseases and the speaker will be dr neelam mohan she will be with us very shortly so kindly uh, comply with us for this for this delay on behalf of alembic uh, maxis division i am myself dr abhijit shivsar medical advisor uh, welcome you all for today's uh, seminar uh, i think we will introduce the speaker she is uh, just in the next few minutes she is expected to join the meeting so dr neelam mohan uh, is director at department of pediatric gastroenterology hepatology and liver transplantation nidanta medicity gurgaon her expertise is in liver transplantation that is b and c ibd and metabolic liver diseases she has been conferred with the most prestigious award in medicine dr b c roy national award by the honorable president of india she is president at Commonwealth Association of Pediatric Gastroenterologists and Nutritionists. Dr. Neelam Mohan is also co-chair of Pediatric Committee of STW ICMR. Dr. Neelam Mohan is president at Child Society and Women Forum of Global Association of Physicians of Indian Origin. She is advisor to the National Board of Examinations. She is also the founder secretary of Indian Society of Pediatric gastroenterologist hepatologist and and nutritionist also she was founder secretary of mrcp ch and dnb examiner she has been the national coordinator for the indian academy of pediatrics and she has been the scientific convener of diarrhea modules 20 in the year 2012 and 2019 so we have a eminent speaker with us and uh, we will be yeah doctor is almost live so we so we will begin uh, very shortly in next few in the next few minutes yes मैम आप माइक को अनम्यूट कर दीजिए मैडम आई हैव जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड यू टू द ऑडियंस यू कैन 
please begin uh, your, uh, your presentation. Madam, kindly unmute the audio and uh, share the screen so that the audience can see the I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to, can you see me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry, yeah. just me, I'm uh, trying to send him uh, uh, the PPT because it's not working or this end, some problem as usual. <laughs> You can talk a little bit about what you people do. <laughs> yeah, I just introduced you to the audience. I've given the introduction and also shared a topic which we are eagerly looking forward to. Okay, dear all, I'll just start by saying that uh, we've all been hearing about COVID and uh, for me also, I thought that uh, there is always, unless you understand pathogenesis, what go wrong, you're not able to uh, uh, can I just see the slide on WhatsApp, which one you're getting, I'm just sending you, please check and let me know when you get it. So I think one of the things that happens to me also under, under uh, unless we understand what is uh, going wrong, we will never be able to understand what is the, how to treat that thing. So therefore, when I was trying to read about the clinical manifestations and all so many times it happened to me. Uh, Jignesh, can you give me the spelling of your email, J I J? Sorry, J D. Yeah, I've got it. Just see, I've sent it to you. Can you uh, get that? <laughs> it says send to me. I think you should get it soon. Did you get it? All right. Am I seeing uh, clearly? Yes, yes. Okay, that's very sweet. So it's in the center, my uh, camera and all, you look to be okay. Right, no. can you start the slide? Do I move it to some right side or anything? It's perfect. Um, slightly to your uh, left, you can move. Yeah, so that will be more center, but that's fine. That's fine. So, no, no, it's okay. fine. Okay. Jignesh, once you open, please let me know. Okay, so dear Rohan, so what I was trying to say is that um, uh, I try to make it a little bit like maths and sometimes I wonder my kids are saying that you seem to be reading so much. Why do you keep doing that? Because I think once we understand why things happen, we're able to do a yes, Dignesh. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So yes. Dignesh, keep looking at me when I'm doing the talk. I will just move my finger because that means next. Okay, so just keep looking at me. Can I put the phone down? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Abhijit, with your permission, may I start? Yes, yes, ma'am, please. Okay, so I hope I'm uh, being seen there because I can't see my. Yes, 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 yes. You are very audible and clearly. So the implications of this pathogenesis is what I'm going to be taking next. Jignesh, keep looking at my fingers. Next, next, yeah. So coronaviruses, go back to the first slide. Yeah, once, yeah. Yeah, Abhijit, you want to be taking it because I he should be very careful of moving it. So but coronaviruses I... are a large family of viruses which are found in both animals and humans. And they normally circulate in the humans too. But most of the ones which circulate are the benign ones, and they give rise to almost one fourth of the common cold like infection. 
Next. So sometimes there are mutations in this virus and these are especially more mutations in the virus that is in the animal reservoir. They try to mutate to infect humans and cause the disease. The first one was SARS 2002. That in 2002, it was called a severe acute respiratory syndrome or the coronavirus COV-1. And these was the first time that we had a big mutation in that. Go back, go back, go back. I'll tell you next, go back. I'll tell you next, don't worry. So the SARS-CoV-1 and the MERS, both of these seem to have emerged from bats and were transferred to human via an intermediate host and the intermediate host in MERS was thought to be camel, while that in SARS-CoV was the civets and the small things. So from there, there was a spillover to the humans. And we know now that there are more than 500 viruses corona that have been identified in bats in China. And their estimates of unknown bad coronavirus diversity, they think could be ranging to thousands. Next. So what was different from earlier? The mortality with the previous mutated, we've had two mutations I said, which was the SARS-2002 and the MERS-2012. But in this slide, I'm trying to show you that in SARS 2002, we had around 8,000 cases with a mortality of 9.5%, whereas in MERS, we had only up to 3,000 cases, but it had a very high mortality of 34%. Next. So COVID, C-O-V-I-D is the coronavirus disease which was caused by this new coronavirus or the novel coronavirus which was not earlier identified in human. Next. So this novel coronavirus is also called as SARS-CoV-2. The reason is it behaved in the respiratory manner like the SAR1 or the COV1, which I told you in 2002, because it had similarity to that, it was called as SAR-CoV2, the virus, and the disease was called as the COVID-19. Next. So this I'm trying to implement that the structure of the COVID-19 virus, which is the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it resembles 90% of the bad coronavirus and almost two-thirds similarity to the SARS-CoV-1 virus. Next. So in December 2019, in Wuhan, SARS-CoV-2 was identified. Some say November probably, but documented December 2019 in Wuhan. Next, by the time the, this disease was uh, declared as pandemic by WHO, it was March 2020. And we can take questions later on. You all know that there's been huge criticism on WHO in that they were not smart enough to realize like the, they thought it would behave like the previous SOV1 where it was predominantly, you know, they could uh, curtail it. So they assumed that they will be able to curtail it to Wuhan. So WHO was not smart enough to restrict the movement of people and therefore it became eventually a pandemic. Next. So the transmission cycle through this circle, I'm just trying to show that there is a, from the back, there is an intermediate host. Please 
understand that this intermediate host is not very clear when it came to SARS-CoV-2 virus. From there, there was an intermediate host to a contact to the uh, humans where the incident before it's a mutated virus. It was not seen before in humans. So we were the incidental host. And there, the reason I, uh, from there, I will talk what is AC2. And from human to human transmission through droplet spread and direct contact was underestimated by WHO. But this is what happened. And it led to human to human transmission. The intermediate host is where we are feeling we are much next please so if i look at these uh, slide you can see the red color zone is the one which is talking of mortality so sars cov1 the mortality was around 9% mers the mortality was 35% but in sars cov2 the mortality is the tune of people 2.5 to 3 in this 2.8 at that given time when the slide was made. So the mortality is much less, but the panic is the spread, next please, is huge. So this slide is beautifully talking to you why COV2 took much harder to control than the previous SARS, which is, sorry for the spelling mistake on the cap, uh, title, because of three reasons. One, I mentioned to you that we knew where the reservoir was in SOV1, uh, in COV1, SARS1. There, they could break the chain, that, uh, but in, in COVID-19, the spillover reservoir is not clearly known and we are not able to break that chain. Second, transmission occurred in hospital setting. So they could implement barrier nursing and take care. Whereas in COV to COVID-19, it's a widespread community transmission. And what is worse? We never knew this initially, but now we realize that asymptomatic people, people who are not clearly looking, uh, who are in the incubation period, or do not have symptoms, they can also transmit. And that is the problem that we are not able to control it so that much as we could do for the dad, because there we were able to, uh, the transmission did not have asymptomatic cases. It happened only 24 to 36 hours after transmission. So despite the clinical manifestation, despite both being involving the respiratory, this major difference which I've highlighted is the difference between COVID-19 and the previous ones. Next, please. So, next. So one thing, all age is susceptible. We know now whether it is newborns, whether it is children, all age is susceptible to it. But yes, I will show you later on why, next please, why children are less affected or less severe. But if you see one slide, I could take out from one of the paper that was presented and at that time in the total cases that you see, we did have children from 0 to 10 years and 11 to 20 years. So out of the total at that time, nearly close to 200 were seen in that as compared to 9, 10, almost 1,400, 1,500 at that. So what I'm trying to basically imply through this slide is that yes, children are susceptible. Next, please. So now when we talk of the mortality, the overall mortality, I said 2.8 or anywhere between 2.5 to 3%. But if I take more than 80 years, then the mortality is to the tune of 14 to 16%. If I take 10 to 18 years, it is just 0.2%. And this series were from the China series. And less than 10 years, were negligible. And in this series, when they took out the data, it was more than two and a half thousand 
uh, children that they were talking about. Next, please. So this was again the China series, which I'm trying to show you that they have shown uh, that the case fatality rate was minimal in the younger age group. And uh, it was, as you keep like more than 70 years was 8% and 60 years was 3.6 and less. Next, please. So the spectrum of disease, this is very important and I'll explain you why as I move on. Now spectrum of disease is mild in 80%, severe in 15% and critical in 5% of the adults. And in children, it is mild in 95% and severe in 5%. Next please. So before I go into further, I thought I'll just take a minute to explain you that whenever we talk about epidemics, pandemics, whatever, we like to talk about the stages. Stage one is limited to travelers. Those who have a travel history to a given place will get it. Stage two is the local transmission. Right now in India, we are in stage two. That means people who have brought the virus into the country, they are transmitting through people to people contact and through contact surfaces and through droplet infection. They are now transmitting it to their friends, family or whoever is coming into contact. This is very important because this is the only way that you can identify and prevent spread of the disease by quarantining them. Next, please. So stage three was the, uh, uh, you know, stage when it gets into community where you are not able to, to say that they are saying that it should be more than 15% of the people that you're not able to identify the contact. When you get almost 15% plus people that you're not able to see the contact, that's when you actually are into stage three or the community uh, spread uh, that we see which is again extremely uh, contagious and stage four is huge numbers. Next, please. So there was a little doubt that there are two strains. Is India getting the milder strain? Because we know that there were two strains, L and S strain, and is one of them more deadly? Next, please. But what we could show is that L strain was more aggressive in transmission. Therefore, there are more number of people who have the L strain, but we were not able to say next that it is uh, whether the strain is different in severity. So I repeat, L strain is more uh, easy to spread. So it is more prevalent, but is that strain also more severe is not clear. Most of the experts don't think there is any difference in the severity of the two strains. Next, please. So now coming to this worldwide data of 22.9 lakhs with one and a half lakh deaths. Next, please. In India, as of yesterday, we had 16,000 plus positive out of a total testing of more than three and a half lakh samples. Yesterday itself in the country, 2000 uh, plus samples came positive yesterday, 18. But case fatality is 3.3 and 11 states had zero or no new cases yesterday. And the worst hit states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, UP, Rajasthan and Delhi. This have been the worst hit states that we are seeing and in the new states that we not coming, Kerala, etc. are the good ones. Next, please. So now I come to business with introduction of this to understand where it came from the virus and now. So please look at this diagram. Because of this, we called it crown, as if there was a crown spikes on the top of it. Now, these proteins, I'm not going to confuse, just giving you the name, S for spike protein. So S is the spikes which help you to stick on to the receptor cells. Along with it, N is the nucleocapsid and then the membrane M envelope E. So we have E envelope M membrane N nucleocapsid. And why I'm talking this protein and these inside is the single stranded RNA virus, which is 30 KB. 30 KB is the size. So the receptor binding domain of this, they say, is the angiotensin converting enzyme to receptor. In short, I'm use, going to use the word AC 
E receptor that there. And for those, I just want to remind that the, I mentioned to you that coronaviruses are with, that existed before in humans were benign. Coronaviruses were of two types, alpha and beta. So this COVID-19, which is a mutated virus originally coming from bat, is a beta virus with this type of structure and this proteins. Next, please. Uh, so I just talked to you about the proteins that the S protein is the one which is for sticking. M is also for transport of nutrients and the N and E other structural protein. Next, please. So uh, this is again the same structure and why those who are interested in this will understand I mentioned that all that I'm going to talk is going to be its, its implications in management. And one of the way you can uh, basically control this is going to be vaccination. So unless you understand the structure and the protein, you will not know that the vaccination when we are, uh, we are doing, we are going to be making what? The vaccination modalities include live attenuated virus, and the chimeric subunit nanoparticle DNA and RNA vaccines. So basically, we are going to utilize these proteins that I'm talking to you about the spike protein or the envelope or the matrix protein. So we need to take care of this SEM protein like in any other virus in making the, uh, uh, in making the vaccine uh, for it. Next, please. So now I mentioned that there are two spikes, as you can see in the diagram. And once it goes through the respiratory droplet, it gets inside through the respiratory tract. And in the respiratory tract, in the, uh, the, the cells, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, alveoli, the, uh, those we will have this ACE2 receptors. So it binds, as you can see in the diagram, I showed that a anti ac so that spike gets into it this way. And next, please. And once it binds, then it will replicate in the respiratory cells. And it is very important to understand what it is doing because next, please, because that is what is going to explain to you that some of them have only symptoms like just fever, cough, fatigue, etc. while others might end up with pneumonia and other manifestations, cardiac and multi-organ dysfunctions and, you know, diarrhea, leukopenia, etc. cetera. And uh, next, please. So we've also seen that the, this virus can in 15% or 20% may even present to you as a diarrhea or pain abdomen. So there was this concern whether there is any, uh, you know, any oral uh, transmission to, we are not yet clear. We do not, though we are able to demonstrate the PCR in the stools, yet we are not able to mention that uh, or uh, uh, to uh, this thing, the, the uh, to culture it except one case report where they said that they could culture. Besides that, in the rest of it, we, sh we are showing the presence of the RT-PCR. And in fact, what we are saying is that when we say that the PCR gets negative for the respiratory tract, we are discharging. But the RT-PCR in the stool may present for a longer time, maybe up to three, four weeks uh, total. So therefore, some say 28 days, third day. So therefore, there is this concern as uh, people, you know, when um, Tabachan had tweeted about uh, uh, transmission through stools. So people uh, uh, had this concern and there were a lot of questions that were being raised. So this is what I'm saying that because it was identified RT-PCR in stool, there is concern in a country like India where there is uh, problems with open defecation and uh, you know, infection associated diseases through stools, etc. Fecal oral route is a major problem. Will that create? And we can discuss this in further in discussion. So, going back to my slide, I'm uh, showing that majority of them are asymptomatic in the green, and some are mild, and the severe is the top of the pyramid that you are going to see. So, therefore, 
there are a lot of cases in the community which is going to be mired and what i'm trying to say is that how will you determine the clinical outcome so based on this pathogenesis you should be able to smartly understand where next is, is things going wrong so this is now i'm trying to show that based on whether the response of the virus could be mild or maybe it is taking severe and critical next please we are showing that the time that it takes for the initial presentation of respiratory symptom to the time it gets severe when you require icu transfer or critical care is actually a long time it's not immediate it is taking more than a week 9 10 days therefore just like we talk about in hepatitis b being a liver expert i will always think what we say is that more than the virus damaging you it is your own body your own immune system which is going to damage you and this is what i'm going and that's why i love this reading about this virus is because i was getting memory about all the hepatitis b and you know the way our immunity reacts against us to you know damage our own body initially you the virus thinks oh it's friend and they stick to each other and then the hepatitis b virus realizes oops this is not my friend and starts attacking and that is a time we need to hit for the treatment when your friend your treatment won't affect so this is how you need to understand when to hit for the treatment and because it took this 9 days experts thought that oh it may not be the virus it may be the immunity which is actually damaging us next please next please so that is the critical care and that is what next please is giving rise to a death and shock etc next next so once it enters into the uh, uh, this ac2 cell it causes the uh, it fuses with the cell next now this is very important to see on the right side the diagram uh, that the corona virus is the single positive strand rna genome now they can produce the protein and genomes in the cytoplasm of the cell so once it gets into the cytoplasm it will utilize the machinery of the host the machinery of the host is the endoplasmic reticulum the golgi apparatus etc it is going to utilize the host machinery in making more virus cells and in making the proteins which i had talked to you about next so the enzyme synthesize the minus so basically you need two type it takes two type of strands the minus strand and the positive strand so the first the positive strand creates the minus strand and then the minus strand uh, uh, the it produces the enzyme and the minus strand will use the positive strand at its template next please so the same thing in this diagram if you see carefully the virus is getting uncoating on the right side i'm showing you the diagram it is getting into the virus it is uncoating and then i've shown you that there is a transcription of the viral nucleic acid then i'm showing you a, a a a plate on which the processing of the envelope glycoproteins in the golgi so that is how on the left side i've written that the smaller subgenomic positive proteins all the other one which i talked to you about nucleocapsid the membrane the spike protein e protein all these proteins are created and next then it assembles once it assembles in the on the right side of the diagram if you see there is that assembly of budding and once it assembles next there is transport of this into the golgi vesicles of the cell and from the golgi it is i'm showing that there is breakage of the cell and it is coming out that is called as exocytosis it is easy to understand because all this happens in the viruses in hepatitis etc only thing is here i'm trying to explain in the lung cell for you but these things uh, so same thing in the lung cells 
it gets in, it replicates, it, uh, it uses the machinery, it makes uh, proteins, it uses the endoplasmic reticulum, it uh, uh, forms a, a, a covering over it and it gets out and releases. Next, please. So this is the way. Now, what happens when this releases? So we will not sit idle, right? So my body will fight. So what is the initial response? It is your innate immunity. And that is through interferon. There is so much of similarity with the um, hepatic virus that I'm really enjoying it. So the innate response is the, the interferon. So the interferon will come and try to uh, uh, protect this, uh, uh, not allow the replications and all. Next, please. But what is happening? Now you see, I, on the left side of the diagram, if you can carefully see, I've done, I've written one, two, three, four, if you can see on that side. So these are the four areas where the coronavirus what a naughty virus. Now the coronavirus is interfering with the multiple steps of my innate immune response, including the, now it will not allow the body to prevent it from RNA sensing or signaling pathway or activation downstream. So what did it do? It was smart. It was, it actually, interfered in all the steps that were needed for me to protect myself from the virus through my innate immunity of this. So in short, this dampening, this dampening of the type 1 interferon response impinges upon now because that is not there, adaptive immune activation will start and virus it is persisting it is it will now give rise to an inflammatory response with, within it next please next please so the virus dampens the antiviral interferon response resulting in uncontrolled viral replication it did not allow the body to stop its replication it stopped us from our innate immunity and it did. So now comes the body's cellular and antibody come in play. Next, please. So this is what I'm trying to explain. Do not get scared of this diagram. See, I have showed that now there is influx of neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, they are resulting in hyperproduction of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. So the helper cells, the TH helper, TH1 and TH17, they are activated. Same thing happens in hepatitis B, C and viruses and all. So now the body, it because the interferon response was dampened, it tried to come with the cellular response and the T cell antibodies. So you can see plasma cell, B cell antibody, T cell antibody, neutrophils, monocytes, macrophage. All this, what are they doing? Next, please. This is nothing but the cytokine response. So the our own defense, our own immunity killed us. They made it severe. So antigen presentation, round circle below. Then came the cellular immunity. Then came the humoral in immunity. All these damaged our own cells and gave rise to a cytokine storm. Next, please. This cytokine storm was responsible for the severe and the critical and the multi-organ disfailure and the death that is resulting in this. So once you are clear, next please, that what is happening, clinical implications, you should be smart. So when there is lymphopenia, leukopenia, that means the there you are trying to fight it with the with the virus they are all seen in the mild disease but 
once you show liver enzymes increased once you show ferritin increased d dimer increased ldh or creatinine kinase or the muscle enzymes increase you should know these have already gone into moderate disease to severe so you should be extremely careful in monitoring in and people have said that the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio if it is more than 3.5 it is an alarming sign just like i talked about ast alt ferritin d dimer and dh in ck next please so i hope you are enjoying as much as i did in learning and preparing because i could imagine about the viruses that happen with a liver here the, it was happening in the lung and so in this slide i'm just trying to think that innate immunity is the one which it came from the interferon so healthy adult it is normal so first let us look at healthy adult innate immunity was normal acquired was normal and you know these cells and they have some memory cells which memory cells are the one that because of the previous infections of corona viruses i told you two third one third of the corona virus 20% of the flu like symptoms occur due to corona virus so they adults had some immunity also and gave rise to mild disease but in the older age group and the comorbidities what are the comorbidities hypertension diabetes heart disease cerebrovascular disease so these the morbidities four morbidities is there your innate immunity is low in old age also and more the the uh, the acquired immunity both cell mediated and humoral mediated immunity is going to be low so you you understand the cell meat humoral is the t cells antibodies is sector so these are low and this is going rise to severe disease but in children we say that your immunity level the innate acquired and all may be low but the memory cells are also next please is low the this is the missing link that they are saying that primarily the memory cells specific next to other com co common corona virus they are expected to be abundant in adults as they have been exposed to many respiratory whether symptomatic or asymptomatic caused by flu and probably that itself may be damaging i mentioned to you that we are own body is against hitting our each other so that is the immunity which has happened next please so this is a beautiful slide see the first diagram if you have good interferon response earlier in it then your disease is low the yellow color is showing that ards was low but if you had delayed interferon response why did that happen because the virus was smart comorbidities your immunity was bad and it did not allow uh, the it, uh, interferon to act in those sites and it kept on replicating then you will have a severe disease so please understand that delayed interferon and subsequent cell mediated and that immunity gave rise to cytokine response which was severity of the disease next please this is the same diagram i'm putting on two sides very beautifully if you have protective mechanism of or you have a pathogenic mechanism in your body against the virus next so protective is the virus is not very robust you got a very good interferon response and there was a uh, uh, a monocyte macrophage neutrophil infiltration small, uh, some amount of cytokines and chemokines were there but on the other side in the pathogenic side there was a delayed interferon response if you see number of up i made for four times the inflammatory monocyte macrophage much higher than a protective the the uh, uh, pro inflammatory cytokines four times higher next so that actually protective was giving rise to optimum t cell and antibody response and viral clearance but enhanced epithelial apoptosis and suboptimal response they were not able to in the pathogenic give rise to viral clearance next please and that is how 
on the right side when your protective immunity is there your boost survival and when you go out of board with a delayed response you get into lung injury ards multi organ disc failure and death next so dear uh, colleagues uh, next i have just talked to you about all this uh, that i hope you enjoyed uh, that so to understand where it happens and how immunity now we are trying to see where the drugs are going to act so we are showing that the hydrochloroquine where it is supposed to act and it is uh, just a little word that it has say a few side effects save in pregnancy confer a antiviral next slide that it is showing next slide it is showing that next slide so the viral inhibition by chloroquine it is impairing the replication of the virus by interacting with the endosome mediated viral entry or the later stages of replication so a it is interfering in replication next please so this is where it is also inhibiting the pro inflammatory cytokine that is going to produce so theoretically these are the areas where it is showing that it is interfering in replication and uh, inter that therefore there is going to be less cytokine release next please so this is again the same i was just trying for those who are interested showing to you that the uh, uh, where it is uh, the green color bullet is the hydrochloroquine that it is interfering with the signaling and then the cytokine expression is going to be less and it is more of an immunomodulator rather than immunosuppressant it is very important to understand this i repeat it is a immunomodulator therefore people have been using this drug for decades in rheumatological disease as immunomodulator and the and the, uh, the rheumatologist will vouch on its safety in several people as an immunomodulator and that is what we are looking for in the treatment of this as an immunomodulator i hope i'm clear next please next please now this is a beautiful uh, diagram which is saying that if you want to once it enters like we know uh, there is a vascular uh, uh, response and thrombosis settling in and you want to give ivig so what is the time to give ivig please see this diagram i should not give it in the initial phase i have to give it only when i am getting into this gray color block in that gray block where the uh, the uh, the immunity the, is in the second stage where the cytotoxic immunity is started where the body is being damaged with the t cells and the uh, that that is the time if i have to give low molecular weight heparin to prevent this you know thrombosis that is being reported with this this is the time to give ivig 0.3 to 0.5g this has been reported in adults so that is the time that you should give the that treatment next please so these were a few slides i'm just talking about and this is my last slide which i'm just trying to show that don't get uh, worried i'm trying to show just go on the right side of the uh, boxes one i said that when the virus had to come with the ac e2 uh, receptor at that time we needed one another molecule which is called as tmprs2 to inhibitor so it so this drug called camostat mesylate is acting here on the tm it is a tmprs2 inhibitor so it is preventing the uh, virus and the Uh, ac2 inhibitor now the next block i have drawn yellow color box where i have written viral fusion inhibitor so what did i say once the it gets into it then it fuses it gets into the cell and it starts replicating so chloroquine is preventing that it is a, a viral fusion inhibitor so that is where it is acting hydroxychloroquine now come down i said that inside the cell we the rna is replicating 
and so we need the rna dependent rna polymerase to replicate so this drug which is very popular you all have been hearing remdesivir where is it acting it is acting on the antiviral rna dependent rna uh, 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 polymerase replication and then the other antiviral lopinavir is just acting at the same instead of the, the fusion with the golgi apparatus that is where it is acting so these are the various side that the drugs are acting now that you know where it is acting you will be i thought at least it gives me insight to choose a drug and to understand when to use uh, you know who's going to be severe who's going to be mild when should i use uh, uh, chloroquine and all that uh, stuff uh, that is there next please so uh, uh, there has been concern next 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 in this they have been concerned that this ac2 inhibitor is there in lung and also in intestine kidney and blood vessels therefore when i was talking to in fact it is more in kidney you have heard experts talking about lot about the kidney disease and the blood vessels and the intestine because these are the four areas and in fact intestine has lot more ac2 inhibitor than and kidney has much more ac2 inhibitor than lung but because it was a droplet infection therefore lung was the first attack but people are saying that yes ac inhibitor are more in intestine and kidney but still that being the first site the same thing happens but once it gets into the uh, gets into these organs then uh, 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 through the circulation then it's going to keep multiplying and all and people thought do we use ac inhibitors expression and all but the latest negm article is not talking it is just talking about that virus and not uh, you know where it is going to act on it so the new drug which i talked about next please next please next please so this is uh, no go back a uh, herd immunity this was go back herd immunity <clears throat> i thought since we are talking about people are saying that i mentioned to you that there was a box i said to you there were a lot of many asymptomatic and some of them were mild and this was the tip of icebergs which were uh, getting into severe so we are assuming that if lot of people get the antibody positive will we get a herd immunity like a typical state but please understand yesterday itself there was a beautiful article which came out from stanford and a study from california what they did is they said that actually to get herd immunity you should have almost 60% of the people positive so it is not possible for us to get herd immunity right now we think uh, through maybe it's too early to get that because we are all uh, 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 we won't and another thing is that the there was a study from china which showed us that the antibodies were not there in almost one third of the people after few uh, or some time so and in one third of the people they were either low or absent so that is why we and we are not even sure will this prevent us from another infection or not so therefore right now herd immunity you can get only through vaccination that is what our thought is and not through because to get that you might you need a lot 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 more people to get infected and you and me or anybody will not want that many infections to get that herd immunity we cannot just think that let more people get and we'll get herd immunity that is wrong next so i will sum up my talk about just telling you the status of vaccination uh, the because i mentioned to you that we will have to produce the vaccine based on that the proteins the structure the m and and all these structure that i was talking about because you need to understand the virus to talk about the vaccine and so uh, again yesterday evening i was going through the article and i was uh, surprised to see that china is claiming that they have taken one vaccine into phase 3 now so i mean they have been one of the first ones to get into phase 3 trial us is still uh, doing into their uh, first phase 1 and 2 i mean they are there and maybe there was some message from icmr that we are looking into uh, september october we should be so we are all being optimistic and assuming that we can get 
immunity and some vaccine, which we were thinking one year, maybe this vaccine will be the first vaccine in the history of world, which will be the first or the earliest to come. And also remember when we talk about vaccine, even if what we need to understand is the vaccine should be safe. If the vaccine is safe, even if it protects 60%, like in rotavirus infection in India, we showed that rotavirus infection in India was giving only 60%. But the number of people that will benefit because the, the amount of infection is so huge that that 60% is good enough. That's what we say to give rise to herd immunity. So similarly, we are saying that even if it is uh, not 80, 90% efficacy, we are looking at something around 60 plus uh, uh, safe. Uh, effectiveness that it should be enough to uh, give us a protection and it should be safe that's what thank you for your kind attention next slide please and i am uh, happy to share that for those who don't know me uh, this is a new platform i'm a pediatric gastroenterologist hepatologist and I was one instrumental in creating the first such department in the country where we offer A to Z facility, which means not only, you know, uh, in children, newborns, endoscopy, motility, manometry, transplants, liver transplants. We've done approximately 300 plus liver transplants. And we do offer fellowships, which is two year fellowships or one year fellowship, et cetera. Thank you for having me over and hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. In preparing the slides. Was Thank it you. Yes, yes. That's a very nice uh, speech, ma'am. Uh, should we take some questions? Yes, please. Uh, for that, let him give me a, a, this thing, a link on my uh, WhatsApp for the questions. Uh, ask Jignesh to give me link for the questions. Un unless you want to take or you want to send me also. Uh, I, I can see the questions here. Yeah, can so I, if he sends me the link, I can see. Yeah. Oh, he's already sent it. So let me open it up and see. Jignesh, you have just sent it as that, so it is not opening. You need to... Uh, So let me copy it into group. Are you read out please in the meantime? Any yeah. You want to read? yeah, yeah, just start with a few questions. Yeah, what? I can see some questions. Uh, uh, is it okay if I take uh, some of them? Can yeah. I read out? I can see. Thank you so much. So somebody sent me hello and said that useful in a lockdown period and it is. So Pradeep uh, uh, Bhatta, I explained to you about COVID-19 not being more common in children. Various hypotheses came earlier, but in fact, what we are saying is that the uh, the lymphocytes and all uh, 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 generally are more in children. But the main thing was the memory cells, which the NEJM article has talked about, that uh, the adults actually have a lot of memory for the previous ones uh, of the corona infection, and they will be more uh, there. Otherwise. All a hypothesis, we don't have a classic um, say, but I showed you in that diagram about, maybe you asked this question very early. So I talked to you about the innate immunity and that, so that uh, being this. And uh, so yes, Shana was, uh, what the Ahmed, yes, we know that in children, the high risk uh, factors are the um, uh, newborns. They are supposed to be more at high risk. Infants are supposed to be more at high risk. And also the immunosuppressed people are supposed to be more at high risk because their immunity is to be poor. So even in children, we have them as their high risk. And the constellation of symptoms are same as that of their, what we are talking about is the respiratory symptom, the GI symptoms, pain, abdomen and diarrhea could be seen in 15 to 20% of the children. So that could be your, uh, 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 the initial symptoms also that you can see. Thank you, uh, Suprabash, for saying uh, uh, good, useful, useful, joke useful. And some of them are complaining that they wanted to join and transmission to breast milk. I kept some questions uh, in the end. Uh, right. So breast milk, we do not have any uh, this thing to say that it is transmitted. So right now, 
talk to your children how much you want to respect that but the guideline that had come is that the mother may use the mask and continue with breastfeed that was the last update however uh, you need to be cautious because yesterday again i read an article that it was found in tears and so the ophthalmologist in usa uh, did not uh, they sent pictures of conjunctivitis and they said that probably uh, they did not want to see the routine so it maybe they showed it when there was conjunctivitis in tears so right now we do not have evidence so that was a very interesting question but i remember reading it and who said that breast milk uh, you can give it with uh, the precautions that need to be taken by the mother then um, uh, so i did tell you more about covid 19 all the discussion was that your uh, this thing pathology we discussed and uh, um <clears throat> good lecture good 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 so a lot of them are praising me thank you thank you i can see at least 100 uh, uh, plus uh, uh, people uh, talking about it very kind of you and great experience us way this thing pediatrician thank you thank you yeah one question shyam agarwal pediatric a uh, practice now see that is beyond the scope of my talk but yes what we are talking i kept again slides after thank you to say that where to use the uh, the you know you have to use the uh, mask as well as the gloves and ideally you should use n95 mask what do you sorry n or ffp2 what do you mean see the it is the mask filtration the filtration of the mask is decided as 95 or 97% depending but since this corona virus is 30 micrometer and majority feel that with the 95% filtration it should be uh, to quite an extent useful so therefore we say 95 then we use two words we use uh, ffp2 and we use n n is an american standard so that's why n 95 and ffp2 is the european standard which means filtration of the particles so pp2 is equivalent to 95 and pp3 is equivalent to 99 hope i was clear so that is how you are going to use it because you are not knowing whom to take now as you know cdc on 4th april they were the first ones to announce that everybody should wear mask and subsequently in india maharashtra and delhi on 8th april suggested that everybody should wear the mask uh, that is there and what about the mask the protection of a cloth mask if the cloth mask is good quality thick there is a study from usa webster or something uh, the uh, the person who did the doctor who did it said that it can be useful in 80 to 90% uh, filtration if it is a good quality uh, cotton uh, this thing mask and therefore and the blue surgical mask which you use sadly depends on the quality of the material it could be as good as 90% and the material could be as bad as 10% so good quality should give you 80 to 90% with surgical mask and a thick mask and you should should uh, uh, hope i'm clear in all your questions you should use that if there's any other question you can write it uh, no uh, this 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 uh hydrochloroquine i mentioned to you there has been concern about the qt12 you know that icmr has suggested that doctors could use it as a prophylaxis those who are coming in touch with covid susceptible or covid uh, uh, cases then they can uh, can use as their um, Uh, can use uh, this thing uh, chloroquine and uh, people have shown concern that especially those who have any cardiac issues the uh, uh, qt interval that they've been talking about could be cautious about it and um, uh, thank you mean raj for saying nice to see you here hope you enjoyed all that they were kb prasad interesting interesting one person said network is poor i hope amijit you looked into that and the rest of them didn't have now yes beautiful 
madam when convalescent plasma have promised uh, pramod patel uh, in india i think two days back came the bug was the first center where they used the convalescent uh, plasma but in the literature in usa people have tried and i showed you a mark if you remember that the best time to use the gray circle of ivig low molecular weight at pre human so the the best time is to use at that not before and not too late when it gets into you know when you are into mods etc so there it is the right time that you must identify severe so there are two definitions severe and critical so in the severe state yes it can be used and people have used ivig so uh, i i i promised you that entire discussion is going to be pathogenesis based on the management implications therefore i hope you're enjoying it because majority of us uh, physicians pediatricians we think why should we learn about pathogenesis and epidemiology but if you don't understand that you won't understand when and how to act so i hope that is what it is uh, talking about it and vaccine i've discussed excellent presentation meanwhile thank you very much there have been uh, 300 people who have commented um, on this good presentation so i think i talked all the questions that had come in it um, abhijit and uh, uh, yeah one or two questions last few questions i think we can take uh, will convalescent uh, so have any promise for treatment of covid 306 was the last question yes, ma'am this gets updated So, okay. so let him give me more. Uh, send him more. I had the. Is he sending me another one? Um, no, this link itself has to be updated. So now the questions have gone till four thirty. Means the comments and questions together. Okay, let him send me the link again, and uh, I will go through it quickly. Jignesh, are you there? Please send me the latest. refresh it ma'am ma'am just need to refresh it and then go down scroll down to the to our side it was a different topic and uh, on a sunday evening hope you people enjoyed it uh, understanding this because i think that they may insight into the subject too you want to ask yeah just a few questions 5 minutes 10 minutes and then we wind it up yes so uh, dr mehul bosai has asked about the role of azithromycin in treatment of children yeah see i have talked about what is available in the literature and uh, scientifically i have showed you where each step is there that was in the initial phase that people talked about but the entire pathogenesis which i explained to you and in the drugs it was not fitting it so people are all now using the drugs which i talked to you about which was hydroxychloroquine remdesivir uh, the that the rmpp uh, that thing people have talked about ivermectin these are too early because these are on the vitro studies we have not shown anything in the clinical and understanding the pathogenesis ex and made us understand what drug will reach where hope i was clear in that yes uh, dr chandan narwani has asked about uh, it is being transmitted at around 40 degree fahrenheit environmental temperature yeah now the thing is that we don't know this time yeah. to show us people are assuming that uh, for example people thought that in africa it was less but we also showed that in cape town it was quite a lot so now there are there was a very uh, funny uh, uh, message i mean through the whatsapp video i saw which was very interesting also they showed with red light throughout the world and i don't know i mean there is a different i'm uh, uh, raising a new concept that wherever the 5g was there there was more uh, 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 disease in those areas but regarding your question that yes we are not yet sure we thought let us see what happens in rajasthan people are saying that it's going to hit 40 and uh, theoretically it all sounds good right but what is there the transmission you know is bad 
that asymptomatic. So what you are saying is that the 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 uh, the the virus is viable on surfaces for different periods of time. That viability on surfaces will it reduce? That is what we are saying. But you know, right. besides the surfaces, the transmission is through droplet infection also. And we right. all know now that uh, that in airborne, in like ICU setting, people have showed that the viability was there for four hours uh, the, in the air. So therefore, the, uh, the droplet infection versus the airborne infection, which WHO said no initially, eventually we said, yes, it could be airborne because the particles were light and were able to sustain in the air with those particles, the virus particles. So that's what it is. Right. And uh, yeah, that's, we have almost covered all the questions. Uh, Dr. Pradeep Bhattarai has uh, made a comment. Is that children have very few H2 receptors in the type 2 pneumocytes, so they get less infected? Uh, well, as I said, the, there was this latest NEGM article, which is now trying to uh, say that let's forget it all. It's saying that all that theory, we are not there for people are not even sure if you were talking to the endocrinologist, they're not sure whether you should, they are saying that if you stop AC2 inhibitors with assumption that if I don't give uh, this and it is going to be beneficial, etc. Uh, they are uh, saying that the the, I had heard an expert say, so I'm just quoting him, right? They said that the people may end up with more kidney damage rather than the through diabetes rather than this. So they are not now hypothetically agreeing with this factor that you should stop and all that stuff. And so that article also was there a week back. Right. Dr. Ajit Thampi is asking any role of steroids. I read a Spanish study stating it could be used early. Well, as I said, basically, you're trying to use it as all uh, uh, later on when we are saying we are talking about your own immunity. So you are trying to give uh, the, uh, you're trying to kill your immunity because I said that the whole damage is because of your own. So it is, a, 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 so when we, when we are using all this uh, drugs, initially people use steroids and all in the month of February, March, you were seeing a lot of studies, but now they are, they, things are better, clearer. So the, the period when they used steroids was that when they, but now when they're understanding it, so it's basically steroids, sometimes people are saying for that immunity, but we don't have great evidences coming about it now. Uh, Dr. Jamal Khan asked, any skin manifestations of COVID-19? Well, I'm not really sure what all, but yes, even with the diagram which I showed, they said, I, you know, you can explore more. Uh, Dr. Matthew Peel asked, is Remdesivir available freely when to use? Uh, no, I uh, think uh, uh, these are all... Uh, available. I mean, I was trying to talk to my adult colleague and uh, they are using it in USA and I'm not aware of its utility that it may be there. So pardon my ignorance about it, uh, whether people have started using it in India. I think that's something um, we have covered almost all the questions. So thank you very much, madam, for the excellent talk and it was uh, very uh, Tell them to write some messages now. Uh, those who have enjoyed it, please yeah, take a minute yeah, and sure. write messages. Uh, I want everybody to just write one lines of uh, do you think pathogenesis is useful? Because I thought it yes. helps. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. just for the weekend. Session. Yeah, I'd like to make an announcement for our next session, Media Expert Opinion on April 21st. It will be challenges in airway diseases now and future. Allergic rhinitis, asthma, and chronic cough by Dr. H. Paramesh. So the timing is not yet decided, but the date is April 21st. So thank you all for your uh, participation and comments. And uh, if any questions which are in that way, I will try to get you back through email. Okay, thank you all. Thank you.